Hi everyone, thanks for joining this webinar about the Regrow Milkweed for Monarchs Citizen Science Project. Uh, we're really excited to have so many people involved and interested in this project. So far we've had hundreds of people sign up and we hope we can have a fun summer together uh, working to learn more about how to improve monarch butterfly habitat. This first video is going to serve as an introduction and overview to the project and just give you some context about it. Um, and in this video, we're going to assume that you already know some basics about monarch butterflies and milkweeds. So if that's not the case, uh, we'd encourage you to watch the short Monarchs and Milkweeds 101 module that we put together or do some research on your own. There are lots of resources online. I want to introduce our research team. We're all part of the Department of Entomology at Michigan State University. My name is Nate Hahn, and I'm doing a lot of the design and coordination for this project. In the middle here is Liz Doria, and Liz will be coordinating the website and email communication. On the right is Doug Landis, who leads our research lab. So if you decide to get involved in this project, you'll be hearing from all three of us in various capacities over the course of the summer. So this is a citizen science or community science project. And what this means is members of the public, or you all, will be collecting much of the data yourselves and then reporting it to us. And this is a really powerful way to do some kinds of studies because it gets so many people involved and we can uh, run a really big study and test big ideas because we have so many folks working together to collect the data. Um, I also want to emphasize that everyone is welcome to participate in this study. Sometimes people take the word citizen in citizen science to mean you have to be a citizen of a particular country. That's not the case at all. We want as many people as possible to participate and everyone is welcome. With that said, there's a few things that you'll need in order to participate. First, you need to be living in a place this summer where common milkweed grows and monarch butterflies are found. So this is roughly the Midwest, Great Lakes, Northeast United States, as well as into Canada. You'll also need access to at least one patch of common milkweed and a way to cut back part of that patch or a way to get someone else to do that for you. Um, there's a variety of tools you can use for this and we'll get into more detail about it later when we get into the specific instructions. And finally, you'll need to be willing to check your milkweed patch or patches for monarch eggs and caterpillars about once a week and then upload the data so we can analyze it and share it with the group. And we're hoping that people will take measurements for at least four or five weeks, um, although you're welcome to do more. So every year scientists check the size of the overwintering monarch population uh, by measuring the area that they occupy in Mexico. Uh, this is when the entire population of millions of butterflies is all clustered together and found in one place. Um, and the population has undergone some alarming changes. It's steadily decreased since the 1990s. We usually say we've lost about 80% of the population size that was measured in the 90s. Um, the current goals increase the population back up to about six hectares, or what's about 15 acres. And it's the dotted red line that you see on this graph here. Um, and we think this would go a long ways towards stabilizing the population and decreasing the risk that it will go extinct. So how can we improve monarch habitat? Uh, there are a couple of things that we already know about. So first, we can plant and encourage milkweed. In many landscapes, monarchs have a hard time finding enough of it. Um, second, we need more flowers on the landscape since these provide nectar to monarchs and are a super important resource for pollinating insects in general. So we already know about these two things, but we were wondering if we could learn more about how to enhance monarch butterfly habitat. And we've learned two really important things about monarchs from our research and from that of others. First, when monarchs lay eggs on common milkweed, they really like to put their eggs on the new growth rather than on older stems. That doesn't mean that older stems aren't important. Monarchs use these two and it's the older stems that flower and that produce nectar and produce seeds. Uh, but given the opportunity, monarchs will often lay more eggs on younger stems. As you might imagine, it's easy for monarchs to find young stems when they first arrive in the summer months, but they get progressively harder to find as the weeks go by. And I wanna point out here that this observation about younger stems is specific to common milkweed. There are lots of other milkweed species in other habitats with their own growth timing. We don't know if this applies to those other species. And for this study, we're focusing specifically on common milkweed. The second thing we've learned is that monarchs interactions with predators are super important. So only a tiny fraction of monarch eggs survive to adulthood, and that's mostly because they're eaten by other insects and by spiders. So that brings us to this citizen science study. Um, it may be that by cutting back milkweed strategically and causing them to regrow, we could provide more diversity in the ages of milkweed stems across the landscape, 
and provides some places where monarchs have less pressure from predators. This is possible because of milkweed's growth form and because of its root system. If you could look below ground under a milkweed patch, you'd see that the stems are connected by a network of thick roots. And when milkweed stems are cut back, these roots are able to produce new shoots a few weeks later. So here are some photos of milkweed stems that regrew after being cut back in June. And as you can see in the photo on the right, sometimes they can support large numbers of monarch caterpillars. We've already done some experiments looking at milkweed regrowth at MSU, and we've had encouraging results. So in this experiment that I'll tell you a little bit about, we divided milkweed patches into thirds, and we left one third of each patch alone. We cut back one third of each patch in the middle of June, and then we cut back another third in the middle of July. And first result was we found monarchs lay more eggs on the regrowing stems than they do on the older ones. Um, so this graph shows monarch eggs laid throughout the summer during our study, and the orange line with circles is monarch eggs laid on older stems. The blue line with triangle points is the stems that regrew after being cut back in June, and the green line with the square points is stems that grew back in August after being cut back in July. And you can see that the regrowing stems consistently received more eggs than the older ones throughout most of the summer. Um, I want to point out that we think the older stems were important too. We noticed that uh, when caterpillars got a little bit older, sometimes they would move from the young stems onto the old ones. So it's not so much that we found that young stems are just better than old ones. It's more that we might want to create a little bit more diversity in how old the milkweed stems are. We also did an experiment in which we put hatchling monarch caterpillars on regrowing stems and compared their survival to caterpillars that we put on older stems. And we found that survival on the new stems is more than double that on the old stems. And we think this is because there's lower risk of being eaten by other insects. Um, I didn't include a graph here, but we also found that regrowing milkweed stems have far fewer predators on them. So taken together, we found that this technique of regrowing milkweeds for monarchs could be a way to increase egg laying and increase survival of the hatchling caterpillars. Which brings us to this citizen science study. The next step for this research, we think, is to try out regrowing milkweeds in several locations at once and see if we can learn more. So our goal is for all of you to do an experiment in which you cut back milkweeds and compare the number of monarchs found on the regrowing stems to the older ones that you leave alone. And we're going to have three research questions we'll try to answer. The first one is, will we see more eggs and caterpillars on the regrowing stems? The second one is, we want to know if some methods or tools for cutting back milkweeds might work better than others. So you all have your own tools available to you, uh, whether they're pruning shears or a string trimmer um, or different kinds of tools. Um, and we want you to let us know which tools you use, and then we'll compare their effectiveness. And then third, we want to know if effectiveness depends on the location or the context of the milkweed patch. So milkweeds grow in lots of different places, um, and we might find that these techniques work uh, works better in some of them than in others. So thanks for watching, um, and we hope you'll watch the next module that will tell you more practical information about how to get started in participating with this project.